Right, we're back again and we've got another piece of software open now, um, which is a piece of software called Deep Sky Stacker. And again, it's free software. Um, and if you can hear them bangs in the background, it's because I've decided that I'm going to be recording video on Bonfire Night, which was probably a really bad idea. But anyway, uh, Deep Sky Stacker, um, try saying that when you've had a few, uh, is like I say, it's a free piece of software. And if you do a Google for it, you'll find a place to download it. And again, it's quite a simple piece of software. I haven't learned everything about it yet. I'm just going to show you what it is I have learned, and then you know, it, like like Reggie stacks really, it'll it'll develop with you. You can learn more about it and probably get something better out of it. But I've been getting some results that I'm quite happy with, to be honest. So we're going to make a start, and on the top where it says Open Picture Files, if you click that and browse to the folder where you saved your pictures before, you know, went from uh, from virtual dub. Um, and all you do is you click on your first image and then if you hold, hold shift and click on your last image and click on open it'll open all those images for you uh, and what it'll do is it'll it'll show them all now in this lower screen now what you can do is if you back, go back over here and click on check all it'll put a tick in all of them that means it's going to use all those images Now, if you want to you can flip through your images and if there's any particularly bad ones I mean that one's quite blurred so we'll, we'll untick that one um, and also say you see there's another blurred one we'll, so we'll untick that one as well and also if, you, if your image is a little bit light or a little bit dark then you can change that over here um, but don't worry about it too much you know if, it, if unless it's like really or badly overexposed or something um, Right, once you've done all that and you've flicked through, and it's a bit like Registacks as well, you can make a reference frame with this, and I haven't done yet, I've just basically done what it is I'm going to show you. Um, once we've got our images ticked that we're going to use, if you move back over again and you click where it says Stack Checked Pictures, you get a bit of a request there, just click OK, and it'll start to go through all the image files that we've loaded into it. Now, one good thing about it is that it, it uses the, the your processor to the, the full extent. Uh, you might keep seeing it flicking up here where it says four processors used. Uh, that's because I'm on a quad core. Um, and it obviously, it tells you how much longer you've got to go. And it's just flicking through those images now and, and stacking them up. Um, and like at the moment, it's got 32 seconds to go. So we'll just uh, pause the video for a second and we'll come back when it's finished doing that. Right, we're back again and it's finished doing the stacking and if you look on the screen now it's, it looks quite disappointing actually. Um, it's just a completely washed out image, some, some detail in there but very, very pale. Um, now on the bottom you've got red, green and blue, um, a graph with, the, with your RGB of your image, which the first thing we want to do now is line those up, which you use these for. And as you can see I can move, move them about, so you just stack them on top of each other so that your red, green and blue are nicely lined up like so. Now one thing that can be a pain at first with Deep Sky Stacker is that everything that you do you've got to click the apply button. So once we click apply it's actually done it and you still can't see very much, it, it actually looks quite pale. Um, now what you can do with this um, is if you, the more to the left that you move this RGMB like so If I click apply, you'll see that it darkens the image, which I, I don't know why and I haven't figured it out yet because it's not that important as you'll see in a moment. Once we've got those, those RGMB lined up, if we go over to the luminance side, you can see we've got sliders now, a little bit like the wavelets in, in Registacks. The one that seems to do the most is mid-tone and if we just play about with that a bit, you'll see that we're starting to bring some detail out and it's, it's darkening the picture off a little bit as well. Now these sliders are quite sensitive, so just you know do it in little bits and if you find that you're overdoing it then obviously just back off a little bit. Um, but you can see now we're starting to bring something up there, uh, a little bit more. Now if we move over to the saturation tab, we can start to introduce a little bit of colour because there's no colour in there at the moment. And again, it's quite sensitive, the slider, so just do it in little bits and click apply. And eventually you'll start to see some of your colours coming up. There we go, like so. 
now we're starting to get a little bit of the, the blues and the oranges from the stars. Uh, as I said before, it's not a perfect picture, this one. Uh, I wasn't tracking very well, and it's actually not focused too well. And you can see where some of the stars are elongated um, because, you know, my tracking wasn't set up fantastically well. Uh, just being impatient, really. But I think you'll agree that even now we've, we've started to get quite a nice image, especially for a webcam. I mean, an M13 on a webcam, that's, that's looking quite good. Um, but like I said, just have a play about some more with these sliders and start to bring some more some more detail up and when you get an image that, you, that you're happy with then all you do see there now I've gone up too far with the highlight I've started to introduce, to introduce some, some dark patches so we just back it off a little bit like so once you've got an image that, you, that you're happy with then it's just a simple matter of moving over and clicking save picture to file uh, and now I'm say I would save these as TIFF images, 16-bit uh, TIFF with zero compression, um, and that's where you'd save your image. Now you can open these images up in, in a graphics package such as Photoshop and mess about again with the levels and the curves and get even more out of it. And like I said, it's uh, I've not got quite got there with this piece of software yet, the Deep Sky Stacker. But um, you know I'm quite happy with some of the results that I'm getting, and if you have a play about with it, I'm sure you'll you'll manage to do just as well and, and, and hopefully better. And we'll look forward to seeing your images posted on the website. And that's it for this one. So once again, thanks for watching.